Hey there, I'm Trevor Blumino, CEO of Voodoo Robotics. Hey, I just wanted to give you a quick introduction to our REST API. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of sending a command to our device, setting the static information in our device, and uh, tell you a little bit about the difference between those two things. Okay, so here we have uh, the interface to Big Block, and, and uh, uh, inset in that, I've got a picture of a device, live picture on, under the camera. Uh, showing a particular device and uh, let's just go into this device you can see on the device the display right now we've actually got the logo and if we just go in here and let's set a location let's just say my location uh, on that device you can see that the logo uh, actually disappears and instead of the logo you actually get to see um, the uh, location uh, so we put in my location, and of course, you know, you can be a little bit more sophisticated than that. Let's put in my area and my location. Let's separate them by a pipe, and you can see, whoops, sorry about that. Um, save that uh, into that device, and you'll see it'll show the areas, my area, and my location. Now, if we go in here, we can do something a little bit more sophisticated. Let's just put in the word hello in this first field and see what that does. You save that. What you're doing there is you're saving the static information for the device. This is like the default, what the device is going to display between picks. And that's a very, very important uh, part of what our device does. Um, it allows you to display all sorts of interesting things between picks, and we'll go into that uh, when we talk about the REST API and all the different types of things that you can store here. But that uh, location and area is actually still there, and if you just go up and push that button, uh, you'll see that it pops right back up. And in fact, uh, it's going to show that uh, area, location, and device ID for a total of, you guessed it, five seconds. That's the display timeout, and the brightness of that button is set right now at 50%. You know, you can adjust the brightness of the button. It may save a little bit of battery power. Uh, if you reduce it, use it a little bit more. If you increase it, it's not that significant. You can always run the uh, battery power estimator or battery life estimator on our website if you'd like. Okay, so uh, really what I wanted to show you here is the REST API. So let's jump right into that. Uh, remember that we've got this word hello stored here and we've got the area my area and location right here and uh, let's switch over right now to uh, Visual Studio Code uh, I'm running Visual Studio Code here and I really like this environment it's one of the only things I really like about Microsoft uh, and I, I typically program in Python these days very useful language but really you can choose any language you like um, uh, we've got some examples actually, and that's where I'm going to start uh, on the website is with our uh, integration page. And you can see here I've actually highlighted uh, our example code. And if we just copy this over and paste it into our Python uh, file, you can see we've got uh, some code there. And of course, you know, username and password ain't going to work <laughs> in this case. We're going to put in, uh, you know, some real credentials here uh, that I prepared for us today. So a test, uh, and this is our uh, demo API that is a correct URL. And so I created this account. This is an API user on our uh, demo big block right now. And so let's run this, and uh, you can see what happens. If I just hit execute, you can see down here, um, nothing much happens at all. Um, let me just do that again. Let's see over here. Um, uh, let's try it again. There you go. So it's running this example and um, didn't affect the device. Well, the reason it didn't affect the device is actually because we have the wrong device ID over here. So let's put in the correct device ID. I'm just going to um, copy and paste it in for you. And um, we now do this, we'll be communicating with the device. We are logging in and we're sending it a command. We'll see what that looks like with this JSON right here. 
there you go. So it says hello there, and you can see the light is flashing. Light is flashing in green. And this will last, uh, I believe it, the default is uh, 30 seconds, but um, you know, you can just extinguish the light just by pushing the button, of course, and it'll go back to your static message, right? So let's try that one more time. Let's go in and we're just gonna change the static message to something else. Let's change it to um, um, Scoo uh, dash one double o triple o one, and let's set a quantity of five uh, in the corner, and we'll hit save there. And you can see now the uh, static message will update. And uh, now, if we run our code, let's put in a different message. Let's say. Um, Okay, and we can run that code, and it should say, please pick three. There you go. Very, very simple basic code here. You can see that we're using requests, and uh, we create a session variable. Uh, this is our base endpoint URL. Uh, we do a post on the login endpoint with our username and password, and what that returns us we then parse, we parse the JSON uh, to get this variable Z. So Z contains the JSON. And then we're extracting the token out of the JSON and using that in the header uh, along with a referrer of the URL. So those are the two headers that we're adding now. There's a lot that Python actually hides for you in these request variables. For one thing, there is a cookie that's exchanged here. And one thing that I recommend doing actually is if you just add a little bit of code in here, and I'll, I'll add this in our description down below. Uh, there's some code I found online, which if you just add that code into your preamble over here, uh, it just enables some logging uh, for your requests. So you can see over here that it's essentially setting uh, uh, your logging level to debug uh, for your requests. And so now, if I run this code, you can actually see it's going to generate a whole bunch of information here. And you can actually see uh, the headers that are exchanged here, uh, you know, the return code of 200, um, you know, what header came through, uh, the set cookie in the header over here with a session ID, right? Um, you can also see um, what we sent, uh, you know, in the post over here, along with the referrer and the token that we sent through. Here's the token. Well, up until this point is the token through to there. Well, all of this information is very, very useful in diagnosing some of the problems, uh, and that uh, is enabled by turning on the logging. Okay, so I don't think that we're going to need that much today. Hopefully we won't. Hopefully we'll get everything working without a problem. So I'm going to delete that code. But what we've got here is the basis for a lot of very good examples. And so what I'd like to do is just show you some of the things that we can do over here. So let's let's take this JSON and divide it up a little bit. Make, format it a little bit nice, more nicely over here. And we'll put this over here, like this, add a comma over here. And then let's add a few more lines to our JSON over here. So let's say we want line three, line four, line five, and maybe even a couple more. Let's see here. Let's do um, uh, color and let's do seconds. So now if we say um, please pick three and we say uh, uh, pick from the top, uh, that was the IC is for icon and uh, let's say red shirt uh, and 
uh, color, instead of using green, let's say, let's use red. And for seconds, let's make it pretty short. Let's just make it 10 seconds so that we can see what that looks like. Okay, so let's fire that one off and see what that does. Okay, you can see there, it's giving us the red flashing light. It says, please pick three red t-shirt with an up arrow. Very useful. Now, the interesting thing is, you know, we said pick three over here. We could have just put in a QT. Let's put in QT over there. Say quantity three. Let's just say pick instead of please How about that. You're limited to five lines of, of uh, instructions for the display. So let's run that one. You can see what that looks like. You have a lot of options in how you set up the instructions here. And of course, this is only going to wait 10 seconds and then it's going to time out. We could make, make it wait, you know, 100 seconds. We could make it wait 10 minutes if you wanted. But remember, you also have uh, the ability to set statics, right? So we can actually set the static uh, information from here as well. So uh, let's try to do that. Um, first, uh, well, let's get rid of this, uh, this text in here. And um, let's see, we put in uh, static A, let's put that in there, say um, uh, how are you, uh, let's just run that, let's see what that does. Okay, so you can see that it actually left the five there, but it changed the first line. And in fact, if you, we now go in here into big block and we go into this device, you can actually see how it updated our static information on the first line. It did not adjust the set static on the second line. We want to do that, we could. We could just go in here and we can say, okay, let's add another line, static B is our second line and say um, I am fine and we run that and you can see the two messages side by side now again this is the static message so this is what the default will come back to when we send a command so let's just re-emphasize that again let's just send a command again uh, to the device. Uh, we're going to replace our JSON again with a command. We'll say this time, um, uh, let's say bottom instead of top, uh, and we'll say take uh, 30 um, blue t-shirts, and maybe we want a blue light. Okay. Now, watch what happens now when we run this command. We have that static message, how are you? I'm fine. And now we get the command that lasts for 10 seconds. And then notice that after that command, we're going to go back to the static message. Static is the basic message. So this is a very useful tool because you could, for example, have in your static message the quantity that's stored in a particular location or maybe the status of an order. If you've got these devices on a, on a picking cart, for example, maybe this is the order ID. Uh, you can also, of course, uh, have a barcode uh, in, in here. So let's go in here and uh, we'll do a refresh. We'll see how our data is updated here. Let's put in some special barcode. Let's say a barcode, um, uh, let's say special name. So we can put in the special barcode on this uh, home screen, let's say, let's call it that, static screen, and now a uh, picker can go up and scan this barcode. In the same way, we could also uh, put in a QR code. Let's put in a QR code instead. So instead of BC, BC stands for barcode, let's put in QR and save that. 
and now you can see it'll switch to using a QR code. There you go. So, um, of course, I'm not saying this directly, but I think it's implied that you could actually do the same thing here. So let's say, um, let's say we want to encode uh, a SKU number over here. Let's say BC, uh, um, and of course, uh, let's say blue shirt. Really, uh, you should actually put in uh, double quotes in Python in these cases. I think that that is correct. Let's see what happens. If you do a backslash B, I think it interprets it the wrong way. So there you go. And I could tell that from the color that it used um, in highlighting. That's one of the uh, benefits of using uh, Visual Studio Code. So there you go. Went back to the static. So, um, you know, some of our customers will actually use a particular barcode, you know, to acknowledge a particular pick. So, you know, the fact that you can set a particular code in here could be a transaction ID, for example. You know, let's say TXN11864, right? Um, and maybe clean it up a little bit, make it a little bit neater. Um, something like that. Let's run that. And now, um, you know, to acknowledge this particular pick, uh, you could use a scan gun to read that barcode and you know that this pick has occurred uh, for transaction 11864. In other words, you can have a unique barcode or QR code for every single command. Um, I think that gives you a really good idea of some of the uh, things that you can do with our device with a very small amount of code. And uh, we'll go into some more of the uh, hairier details in the next video. Thanks for your time.